Hi guys, in this video we're going to build a brewery. Scruffy Crow. Ah! Okay, for this project we're going to use a mixture of a uh, laser cut model and some 3D printed parts. The laser cut model is from Laser Model Store. Uh, I've got a few of their buildings from there. They're very similar to the buildings they sell at war bases as well if you want to pick them up. Um, but they've got some slightly different ones. This is the Blacksmith's House and Forge. As you can see from this photo, it's got a, a little sort of uh, outback building uh, that would be the forge. Uh, but for our purposes, I've already got a forge. It's going to be a brewery. The 3D printed parts, uh, I found these on Thingiverse. Uh, these were free. I'll shout out to the maker at the end of the video, uh, but right now I've forgotten his name. Uh, but this is his page. He's done loads of amazing stuff, and the link will be in the description. Um, these are printed at 0.1 layer height, so a lot chunkier than I normally print anything that was like a, a model. Uh, these you can definitely see the layer lines in some places, like the tops of the beer here, and the dome. If I get that in the right light. Um, but I don't think for something like this it's really going to matter. And obviously the thicker layer layers meant that I could print this a lot quicker. I think stuff this sort of size um, would obviously be almost more suited to a, uh, an FDM printer, a, a filament printer that uh, sort of lays down the plastic. Uh, but I've got a resin printer, so I'm printing them in resin. So I just uh, pulled another batch of brewery type stuff off the printer. We've got these big barrels. These will go on this rack. As you can see, they are quite large. Is my generic human thug as a size comparison. So these are, as I said, very large barrels of beer. Uh, so they'll go on that rack. And then we've got some more sort of standard sized barrels, even if a bit small, almost firkin sized. Um, we've got three racks of those and they go on this base. And then I printed a few more of these barrels, this file, uh, but scaled to match these. So it's not a perfect match, uh, but it's the right size, I think. And obviously I can scale this up and down until I get the right sort of size barrels uh, that I'd want. So yeah, so they rest in there, something a bit like that. Uh, and make another sort of barrel rack. Because uh, of the way these are printed, they're dead easy to print because they're all flat on the back, everything's flat. So this is all just printed straight on the bed. And as you can see, I uh, yeah, said before, completely filled my bed. This whole print run for all these barrels uh, and this base was only like an hour or so, because uh, they're only printed, as I said before, uh, and quite low resolution. I still think they've come out nice and crisp. There is a few lines there at the bottom shift where it shifted a bit, but I'm still pretty happy the way this has come out. And I'll obviously be keeping hold of this file because as I said, I can make barrels of any size now and any amount that I want. So that's kind of good to know. One thing to note on this though, is the footprint is this shape, the little notch on the end. And the footprint cut out of this base is just a H shape. So that's one thing you might want to look at. Uh, it doesn't quite fit in there. That's quite straightforward just to nibble off. And then we've got that profile that we need. And they fit in there perfectly. This barrel rack's got a similar problem. Um, as you can see, it was printed. printed. As you can see, it was printed flat to the bed. Uh, you can see the scratch marks on my bed there uh, with these four holes. So the nubs that are meant to go in them are printed perfectly. Uh, but obviously there's no way they're going to go in there. So I've got two options really. I could either drill those out uh, and place it in. But I think, because of how well this resin seems to glue together, I'm probably just going to file those off and do it by eye. So there we go, there's my sort of stillage part uh, put together. And the barrels will just sit on like that. And I don't know if this is purposeful, but as this, it does tilt the barrels forward a bit, so it's quite realistic, I quite like that. Uh, they sit forwards a little bit like that. So I'm just gonna drop just a bit of glue into the bottom of each of these. And that should be enough to seat these in quite nicely I think. So here's the uh, little stillage with all the barrels nice and firmly glued on. I said all the backs are pretty plain so we'll put that up against a wall 
And I'm pretty happy with that's come out as well. So it's a nice little bit of scattered terrain for around my uh, brewery. I've just got one more plate to print after this and then I've got all the pieces I wanted uh, for this full set, uh, like he shows it on his uh, Thingverse account. Okay, so the last batch came off the printer uh, and we've got the big sort of tank. That's where one of the little separately printed sort of spigots went on. I found that the ones that I printed directly onto the bed, so pretty much all of this was printed directly onto the bed, um, but the ones that the spigots have got that little sort of uh, elephant's what I think they call it, uh, whereas actually I put a couple on supports and they went a lot smoother. Uh, so if you print this off, yeah, this little bit here and the bit that goes on top of here uh, seem to be worth putting on some supports. But everything else uh, printed without supports, uh, including this one. Uh, so we've got like a little still here, uh, we've got a proper little fermentation vessel uh, here, looking pretty cool. And then we've got the big uh, sort of boiling tanks and everything, and our various kegs and barrels, like I mentioned before. Uh, so I'm going to put this lot aside for a little while, and we're going to get the MDF built. As I said, this is a kit from Laser Model Store. And I've put a few of their buildings together before, and hopefully this is one of the ones with a nice sturdy base plate. So I'm going to try and find that first. Here we go. I think for the basic houses, I normally just do this by ear, but I am going to consult the instructions, I think, for this one. Uh, it's a bit more of an intense kit. Okay, I've gone and downloaded the PDF, and I was actually right about where all these bits went. So I'm going to get one of my trusty Pingles lid. I'm going to be using this uh, wood glue. Uh, I find wood glue is just that little bit stronger than PVA for stuff like this. And I'll just be mostly using toothpicks to apply it. Start with this nice big long section. We've already test fitted it, so we know that fits in there quite nicely. And I'm just going to apply glue all down but it's going to sit in on the, against the base. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each of these little tabs as well. Now I wish you guys could smell this because right now this whole desk area smells of um, burnt sort of wood and PVA and I actually Love that combination. This is actually one of my favorite things in the hobby, actually making kits like this. So another really useful tool to have when you're putting together kits like this is emery boards. I get these quite cheap from uh, Wilco. As someone described it once, it's actually just like uh, small strips of cheap, easily controllable sandpaper. And I use that just to take those little edges off anywhere that I need to. And this time, because we're gluing uh, the opposite way. I'm just going to put the glue down that side and then in the slot. Before we do another layer, we make sure everything is nice and square. I don't really have to worry about all these little glue spills. I can wipe them up if a little bit, but that will all dry clear. Anyway, we're going to paint the whole thing anyway. So I've got a corner here that's refused to sit completely square for me. Uh, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of masking tape, square all that up, and sort of stretch it across and that's just enough to hold it square while the glue, glue dries. I might leave any mark afterwards. Another good tip is going to be when you've got slightly more delicate bits like this uh, is to take a scalpel and just pick out those uh, join in pop marks. So now that's popped out a lot easier without any risk of damaging this thin bit. Okay so that's the second story. Done in much the same way, and I've got a big bit of tape around there to keep all these edges together. So the floor is just clipped in with these little studs on all sides. And we've got the door on that side lining up with the top of this little staircase. This was a bit of a pain, trying to get all these stairs to line up on the second side. Uh, but I got it in. I'm going to keep this separate for now because I'm not exactly sure how we're going to use that. 
I've realised that my brewery area is potentially a lot smaller than I initially anticipated. We might have to leave that bit off and just have the main bits here. Big tank out here. I might have to build a secondary shed for these. I think I might mention this is actually meant to be a blacksmith's forge. So we do have a section there which makes a little sort of fireplace which we're not gonna be using, so I'll put that aside. Uh, and then a, a chimney and a hole in the roof uh, which we'll have to patch back over. I'm keeping all the floors unglued and separate. Um, I don't know why, because actually it generally causes me more hassle than it's worth. Uh, but just in case I ever wanted to play some sort of in-depth role-playing game, I might as well keep them separate. Uh, so this is the last section now. I have heard about people using uh, super glue for models like this. And although, yeah, it can give you a much quicker bond, I quite like using PVA or wood glue because it gives me the chance to change my mind like I just did. Um, sort of shuffle things around. And if the only sacrifice is I have to use a little bit of masking tape now and again, uh, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. All of the cladding for the front is back in the bag and we'll see that again in the next video as well uh, where we will be painting up all these parts. Okay, so now the construction's all finished and I've left it overnight to dry. Uh, so I can take off any tape I was using. As you can see that corner has stayed nice and sharp. I think, I'll, I think I've decided I'm gonna keep all of these bits separate uh, to paint it. And I said I'll make some other project with the other resin pieces. I'll just stick with these for now. I was a bit over ambitious about how much I could ram into this little barn. One more resin piece we are gonna do though is this trapdoor. Also from Thingiverse, uh, it matches the design of these quite well, the wood grains and stuff. And I quite like the design of this house because the door for the upstairs is here and you can almost imagine this being sort of a warehouse type area with the double doors on the front. So I'm going to pop a little trap door over here. So to glue this in I'm just going to drip a little bit of super glue on the bottom there. And pick where it's going to go. Just sort of drop it down. And I'll paint that up with the rest of it. Okay, so the last thing for this session is going to be the roof. And for that, I'm going to be using these tiles from Warbases. Uh, these are laser cut, they smell delicious. Um, and they come in sort of A4 sheets. This one's got some extra ones in from last time I was working. And all you do, is starting at the bottom, we layer them up, one layer, and then the next layer, you put off center like that. So for this, I use regular PVA. And all I do is I slather a bit on, and we try and get that nice and straight down the bottom there. And then just add another layer of glue on top of that. And we don't worry about trimming this excess at the moment. Uh, we can get that when it's all dry. That's my next layer on. I'll just keep working up. Okay, so there's one side fully completed. It is kind of repetitive, but it's kind of a, a zen thing to do. So I'm just gonna repeat that on the other side and on this roof here. This roof here might be a little bit quicker because uh, it's just one side. And for this door here, uh, which would have been the chimney if we were going to put one in. Uh, I am just going to stick over a bit of tape. So the tiles should still stick on um, on the top of the tape uh, and then once it's dried that'll make a sort of hard shell uh, through there so you'll not even see that these were there. As well if you're worried about sort of wasting tiles you can quite easily use shorter strips so we just glue that up get the first strip on there like that and as long as you've got a nice flat section down one side of the tile. You can line that back up completely perfectly because obviously we're using PVA so we've got plenty of time to work with these. And then when you've got the next layer on you can't even see where that join was. Okay my roofs have had all night to dry and they are nice and 
smooth and solid. Uh, I've already trimmed off this top bit, uh, but trimming them two ways. You can even use a pair of scissors, or sometimes uh, what's better is a knife. But only if it's a nice sharp knife, uh, otherwise you'll rip it a little bit like that. Uh, so scissors might be better off for me right now. The last thing is going to be some regular sort of. This is like cereal box card almost. It's like a small packaging. And I'm cutting a strip about a centimetre and a half wide. And I'm going to cut some sort of say centimetre wide tiles, I think. Let's see how they look. So just folding them in half. And they're going to go on there. So actually, that's a little bit too long. So for this one, about a centimetre square is about right. So I've got some more PVA. I've gone for a bit thicker stuff this time. It'll be a little easier. And again, we're just gonna slide this across the top tile. I'm not gonna overlap these. I'm just gonna put them side by side. And I'm putting the rough cardboardy side out and the smoother printed side in for these. I'm not sure about what to do with the top of this, but I'm gonna sort of, I think I'm just gonna use a bit of this strip of this cardboard, uh, like it was sort of leading. So I'm just gonna lay that on there. Try and that make that a nice even and natural. Uh, and then I'll just trim off the excess and we'll just have that nice little finishing border. And that's where I'm gonna leave it for now. Uh, so we've got the whole thing put together. That's all of the sort of crafting and building work I'm going to do on this for the time being. Um, so the next stage is going to be to get some paint on here uh, and I'll do a whole video on how I get this painted and then stick the fronts back on. And that's all for this video. Please let me know what you thought down in the comments. Uh, maybe subscribe for more. And as ever, thanks for watching. Bye.